Hey, Steve here. Today I want to talk about metadata-driven pipelines looking at Microsoft Fabric Pipelines in Azure Data Factory. Metadata-driven pipelines are really important for scalable ETL and having very good practices reusable. Let's have a look over and see what they are. What is a metadata-driven pipeline? A metadata-driven pipeline is a data pipeline that uses external metadata. This could be data that we've stored in a SQL table or a JSON file or something like that, but data and tables that we control. The pipeline then uses this and it controls the behavior of the pipeline rather than hard coding it. Why should we use a metadata-driven pipeline? Well, the metadata-driven pipelines reduce duplication. It means that we can use the same pipelines for different processes and dynamically control how they run using our metadata tables. This is really helpful for scalability and maintenance because if we want to change a run, debug something, or just load certain tables, we don't have to go into the pipeline itself and edit the hard-coded values. We can simply update our metadata. And how does it work? Well, it uses an external data source, such as you know, a SQL table or a JSON file or maybe a CSV file. The data pipeline then takes this data and it uses a few things such as the lookup, the for each and if condition activities. These are activities in the pipeline that help it read and apply these rules. That's very theoretical. So let's head over and see an example. What are these activities? Now, the lookup activity retrieves the data from an external data source. This could be our, our CSV file, our SQL query. So the lookup activity in the pipeline actually gets the data from our data-driven metadata storage and brings it into the pipeline. The for each is really important. What a for each it will iterate over a collection or that data set that we brought in, and it will execute specific activities all in a loop. And finally, we have the if condition. If you're familiar with other programming languages, you may have used if conditions before, or even in Microsoft Excel, but they test a condition and do a different activity, whether this condition is true or false. Now it's very theoretical, so let's actually head over and see a metadata-driven pipeline in action. Here I am in my fabric warehouse. I have a very simple metadata-driven table. This is my data store, and this table is gonna control how my pipeline acts. This table is quite simple. I have a source table column, a destination table column, and an update value column. The source table is actually the table name of the table in the source. In this case, I'm using an external database somewhere else. What I do here is I list all the tables that I want to copy over and their name. So I can actually dynamically control which tables my pipeline is going to bring in. The destination table in this case is the name that I want to give my table when I'm saving it into Fabric, where I'm copying it into the destination. I also have this update value. At the moment they're all ones, but I can change this to a one or a zero. And the metadata driven pipeline will only load in the tables with a one. So this can be very helpful if I just wanna not load certain tables, or maybe there's just one table I need to bring in, I can change everything else to zero and leave that as a one. Let's head over to the pipeline to understand how it works. The first thing I want to look at in my pipeline is these variables. Pipelines can have parameters and variables. Parameters, are things that are passed into the pipeline when it's run and they don't change during the, the pipeline. So these aren't gonna be used in this case, 
but they can be of your running specific pipelines and you want to pass in a, a value at the start and then it won't change. A variable will be updated in the pipeline itself during the run. So in this case, we're going to run through and use a variable to store values and that variable is going to change as we iterate through different things in the pipeline. I have two variables and the first one is the source table, second is the destination table. These are the names of the table and the source and the destination. We'll see how they're used later. They're both strings and they're just variables which I'm going to use to store some information that will be used later. Here is my very simple pipeline. I have a couple of activities here. The first activity is this lookup activity, and I've named it get tables. If I look at the settings, we can see here that I'm connected to my logging warehouse. This is the warehouse I just showed you, which holds the metadata and it holds all the control values. I have a query down here. The query is simply returning the source table column and the destination table column from that table where the update value is one. So I'm only loading in the columns that and the rows that I want to actually update. I'm going to click preview data and it's going to give me a, a preview of my data set. Here it is, and this is the four rows because all update values were one, and it's brought in the source table and the destination table. This is my data set that I'm going to use. The next activity is a for each loop. This is going to iterate over each of those rows. And you'll see in the settings in my items on what to iterate, this is says get activity tables. Now this is, data pipeline and data factory language. Luckily though, you can actually use these preset code snippets down here to help you and you can go look at the syntax or ask online. But what this means is it's saying, whatever we have from get tables, use the output of that. So I'm using the output from the get tables, which in this case is those four rows. Now I'm going to enter my for each pipeline. See here, I have three activities and these three activities execute on each row. So it's going to iterate through each row and execute these activities for each row. The first two are setting variables. I like to set these variables when I'm reusing them later as a good best practice. So my set source variable, you'll see in the settings, I'm updating the source table and I have at item source table. At item in this case just means the current row that I'm on. So for this current row that I'm iterating through, save the source table, which is the column name. So save this source table value as the source. Destination, very similar. It's at the current row, but this time use the destination table column. Then I have a copy data. You see in my source, I'm connected to my external source data. And this is where I use the metadata driven part. The table that I'm copying is variable source table. So this refers to this variable I just set here in the set source, which is called source table. So it's taking the name dynamically from this variable, which is set from the row from my external data source. In my destination, I'm saving it to a fabric table in a lake house. And again, the name of the table is going to be the destination table variable, which is the current row of the destination table column. So this is then setting the name of that table to the value that I set in my external data. That was our metadata driven pipeline. Let's have a recap to see how it works when it's being run. Here is our pipeline. The first activity we're going to execute is that lookup, the get tables. Now I'm going to just store in the top right where we are in the pipeline. So right now we're in the main pipeline, the top level on the get tables. The get tables, we wrote this query where we said get the source table and the destination table from our metadata uh, data set in our external 
warehouse that we're storing the data in and where the update value is one. So only the tables that we've marked we're updating. It's gonna then send that query to our warehouse and that returned this data set with four rows. Next, we execute the for each. And what happens is we go row by row. So we start on this first row of the customer line. And we're going to enter the for each with the context of this row. So for row number one, and you can see here in the current activity, we're inside the for each loop now. And the first thing we're going to do is set the source. So these are those variables that we set up at the beginning. And the first one is the source table. And in this case, it's the source table in the top left of the first row, which is dim customer. The next activity is set destination. And this is going to be the destination table column in the current row, which is going to be customer. Then we're going to perform a copy data activity. The source table is the name of the table in our external data source that we're connecting to. And the destination table in this instance is the name that we're going to save it to in our fabric warehouse or lake house. Once it's done that, it's then going to go to the next row. It's going to go ahead and perform those actions, store those variables and copy the data for all the information on this row, in this case, the product table. And it's going to go row by row by row until we perform the activities on all of them. Now, a for each can have many more steps. We saw a very simple example, but another example could be we want an if condition for incremental or full load. So I could add another column to my metadata driven table, the one that I control in my, my logging database. And I can say, is this a one for an incremental load or zero for a full load? Then we will go through and instead of just doing a copy, we will have an if condition and it will look at the current row. And if it's marked as incremental, it's going to follow the incremental path where it does incremental loads. Or if it's marked for full load, it's going to do this full load, copy the whole table. This could be really useful. So we can have the same pipeline that runs both fact and dimension tables, which means we can have this one pipeline iterate through and treat different tables differently. What else can be metadata driven? Well, quite a lot can be. We saw the example of the source and destination table names. This is very common and we want to have the rows of the tables that we want to include. When we have this, which means we can dynamically change, increase, decrease the tables that we're copying over just by controlling the one external metadata source. We had hard coded though, directly to an external data source into a fabric warehouse. But this sort of stuff can also be metadata driven. Word of warning, Microsoft Fabric is a lot newer product compared to Azure Data Factory. Although they're very similar, Azure Data Factory is still a bit more mature. So there'll be some things in Microsoft Fabric that you can't yet metadata driven control. However, that is changing all the time and it's getting a lot better as we go. And hopefully we'll have the whole functionality that we have in Azure Data Factory very soon. We could also do things like column mappings and schemas. So we can control how the columns are mapped, how they're saved, the data types, all this sort of stuff. We can do control logic. We saw an example where we said if it's an incremental or if it's not an incremental. We might also have some basic transformations that we want to do to certain tables and not to others. So we can actually skip steps and have if conditions to say, if it meets these conditions, we'll perform certain transformations on some tables and we won't do it to other tables based on what we store in our metadata. We saw the incremental load example. You will probably also want to include the column. So for an example, you might have an updated value date and this is the, the column that we want to perform the incremental refresh on. So we can control which columns we want to use because they may be called different things in different tables. 
partitioning, if we have certain partitioning logic that we want, we can control this through the metadata. Validation and quality checks. Maybe we have a table and we know there should always be over 10,000 rows in this table. It might be a dimension table and we say, if it's under 10,000 rows, we know there's been some sort of error. Maybe there's been an error in the data source or something's gone wrong. So we could have this and in our metadata, we can have a, a variable number, which we say is a row check for each table and that could vary for each table. We could then perform a quality check. And if we don't have that amount of rows, we could fail that part of the pipeline and send a message saying something has gone wrong and more. You can probably see now metadata driven is quite expansive and depending on your ETR process, there's a lot that you can and should be doing. That is metadata driven pipelines, a very simple introduction. These are really best practice and I recommend that you do use them. As you can see, you can make your pipeline scalable you won't have to have separate pipelines with, for each table and you don't have to hard code every little thing and makes it very hard to change an update. Especially as your ETL grows and you get more and more tables, more and more uh, data sources, you want to be doing things in a consistent manner to all of your tables. However, each table might need to be treated slightly differently because of the nature and the uh, content of those tables. So metadata driven pipelines are an excellent way to do this. Thanks a lot for watching. Definitely check out if you like this, some of the other videos that we have, other tips and tricks. Please do like and subscribe. It does actually really help us keep putting out uh, content on this channel and growing the channel, more tips like this. Thank you very much and hope to see you next time.